Hey everybody, Paul Soros Jr. here. Welcome to Indie Games Test Drive. Today I'm going to take a look at Frayed Knights, The Skull of Smackdown. And this is a brand new classic RPG dungeon crawler. Just came out today, in fact, which is, uh, what's today? September 28th. And um, this is actually the release candidate that I was given a few days ago by the developer Rampant Games. But it is now available for sale. It's, I think, $22, $23 on their website. And uh, it's currently only for Windows, but according to the website FAC, it looks like it's going to be out for Mac sometime in early 2012. So head on over to the website. I'll put a link in the description and you can check it out. There is a demo as well. So you can download and try it. But I'm going to just r jump right in here. I've played for about an hour or so just to get my feet wet and uh, I'm gonna go ahead play a little bit more and you guys can hop in the back seat and put your seatbelt on and enjoy the ride so ramp uh, frayed nights is um, kind of a classic style computer RPG very similar to say a dungeon master eye of the beholder uh, might and magic series so the combats turn-based you do get to walk around in the dungeon in a first-person view and when you encounter monsters in the dungeon, then it goes into a turn-based mode, and you have your party of adventurers here, and uh, everybody gets to take their turns, given some smackdown. So let's uh, let's get started. Okay, it's a half day's journey from the village of Arden. Our unlikely heroes reach their destination and the location of their greatest quest, the ancient and foul temple of Pakmo Zang. So as you can see, this is a party-based, it's a fantasy RPG. We've got all of the archetype classes here represented. We've got Ariana, who is our fighter. We've got Dirk, he's the rogue. Benjamin is the priest, um, kind of a nature priest, like a druid. And Chloe is our sorcerer. So all we can do here is click on next. We've got to get through the dialogue. Uh, oh, and there's a little bit of banter here between all the characters. If you're familiar with, say, Baldur's Gate, um, or Dragon Age, where your characters kind of have this uh, relationship. And it's kind of funny and um, interesting to see what they have to say with each other. Unfortunately, there's no voice acting in this one. It's all reading. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'll throw some voice flavor in there for you. Okay, people, let's do this one by the numbers. I don't want to repeat of last time. You just click next. Why are you looking at me? That explosive trap wasn't my fault. Lee should have been a good three feet past the minimum safe distance. I'm not just talking about that, Derek. Benjamin's heels could have been a little more punctual in the battle against the weed goblins. That's not fair. Nobody told me we were under attack. Just please pay more attention next time, and Chloe, please refrain from blowing up treasure rooms in the future. Hmm? All right. No exploding the treasure chests. Right... That's Dirk's job anyway. Hey. <laughs> okay, so I played that totally <laughs> stereotypically. Okay, so help and tutorial window pops up here. Chatting and moving. I will discuss all this as we play. You don't have to read that. So um, right-click on the mouse and you can turn around. WASD to move. Very nice. It's very fluid and smooth. At least on my computer, which is certainly not cutting edge, but uh, runs fairly well. So here we have our little compass rose. Um, we have this little area down here for system messages, and we have our radial dial here for what we can do in the game. There's really not much to do. It's a, it's a classic dungeon crawl um, in every sense of the word, and there's plenty of combat. There's treasure, there's monsters, and there's some mystery and so forth and so on, and I will explain all these other cool things as we play. So let's hop right in. Let's head into the temple, shall we? Like I said, very fluid motion. A left click on items in the game. A fragile box. This box has been seen better days and has a big hole in the bottom. Aside from the hole, there's not much to see. Now, I have gone through this already, and the boxes, some of them have things in them. Most do not. Although, if you want to take the time to read some of the uh, silly descriptions, and they are silly, this is kind of a tongue-in-cheek adventure then uh, feel free. I'm not going to do that now because I have limited time. 
So, this is the Temple of the Goddess of Disease? Nope, that's New Toxis. This was the Temple of Puckmore Zang, the god of boils, blisters, and pimples. Ew! I don't feel bad about raiding his temple, then. He owes me for my teenage years. So, what if you get a disease that gives you boils? Which god is responsible? I think they both are. Okay, I'm really not fond of this god. So, what kind of person would actually decide to become a priest of a pimple god? Someone ready to give up on the dating scene, I guess. Shh, I don't think we're alone here. This temple does not look abandoned at all. <laughs> I don't know how long I'm going to do those voices, but <laughs> most people really don't like them. All right, the big box. This box is labeled relics and is full of various knickknacks that appear to have been designed as a tourist, as tourist souvenirs. There are little wooden blisters on a chain, cheap imitation Pockmore Zang priest masks, WWPXD bracelets, prayer. So as you can see, a lot of tongue-in-cheek stuff, and it's part of the fun if you're into that sort of thing. There's... Uh, all right, this box looks like it was violently opened. It's empty, but stuck between it and the walls. A note that looks like it was misplaced or lost. The rope needs. There's supposed to be some small stash of goods hidden in the left guard room. And it looks like you might get some tips and rumors as well. But let's get into the good stuff here. We've got combat coming up. And here we have one of the first denizens of the temple. And a uh, picture of, apparently, that's the pus god. Uh, let's go. Get it. Aha! Combat begins! So now we're in turn-based mode, and uh, we have Ariana goes first. As you can see, the red flashing around her, so there must be some hidden role for initiative type thing. And uh, Chloe's got something to say here. Ew, pus, I hate these things. Got to get through the dialogue. Wait a minute. That stuff covering these monsters is pus? Worse, I think these are pus columns, creatures magically built out of pus. Somebody deliberately manufactured these things? How would someone do that? Why would someone do that? You think these are bad? Pray we never run into a snot golem. Combat tutorial. A for attack. This is quite simple. A to attack. C to cast a spell. R for rest. Flee to flee. F to flee, which I have not done yet. But um, you can do that. It's an option. N and P to cycle through opponents. So here's what we're going to do. White opponent is... Our target, Ariana goes first. One, two, oh, wait, what's this? Uh? Two, three, and four, and I'm just gonna hit A. You can use this as well. You can click or hit the keys. Smack. Okay, now Chloe's going to cast a spell, and I'm gonna hit C, and brings up her three spells that she knows, uh, levels one through two. We're all level two right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit, actually, I'm gonna choose this guy since we have a pair of. Golems, I'm going to hit cast, and I'm going to put him to sleep. I'm going to attempt to put him to sleep. And if you want to see the spells, you can go here and read about them. So, invoke snoring. Uh, puts a target to sleep. Probably not peacefully, since they're usually in the middle of a fight. And it tells you the endurance cost. So, I'm going to do that. And him. And as you can see, the little icon down here representing the fact that he has been put to sleep. So, now we're going to hit Puscal. Go, Dirk, get him! I'm not seeing the number. Oh, there's the number. Okay, hit him for now. Benjamin also has spells. And he's got with uh, with writhe roots, treat poison, angry flowers. You know, I played the whole about an hour and I didn't even see this one because it's not on the hot bar. Duh. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and do angry flowers on this guy. I'm just going to give him a little zap. Nice. Oh, so bad. He was hurt. Swing and a miss. I'm going to cast, um, let's do writhe roots on this guy. See the roots down there? Seven damage, not too bad. I think I'm going to cast Frostbiter, Blurry Form, Cheat Sheet. I don't know what that is. A wonderfully way to violate all kinds of privacy through magic. This spell maximizes the knowledge level of the target enemy for the purposes of the monster journal. You only cast this once. Oh, I like that immediately. Okay, let's let's do that. Since we're early on in the game, we can just go rest if we get in trouble. And now we'll hit you with a little hot. <laughs> Roasted. Everybody has a melee weapon, so you can just hit A if you need to. All right, drama stars. Here's the drama stars. I will explain these. Um, there are three different effects. And let's see, for uh, Fool's Luck, grants one hefty bonus. 
Uh, okay, second wind cuts exhaustion in half and eliminates all pending fatigue. I just have to familiarize myself again with these. I got better. Um, heals up to 50% of the character's maximum. And only a flesh wound. Anyway, as you walk around in combat and even open doors and um, pretty much any event will fill up these what they call drama stars. And these can be used simply by clicking on them um, and you can choose various levels. So each one of these little petals on the star is going to be filled after accomplishing something. So right now after that combat, that little bronze petal shows up, the point, whatever you want to call it, and it's going to go all the way around as I do things and I'll have one bronze star. When I have one bronze star, I'll be able to do uh, fool's luck. And I can do that during combat or after combat. And then next, um, it opens up second wind, I believe. And then I got better and finally only a flesh wound. And I'll, I'll probably use those eventually. But just keep it in mind that they're there for you um, when you really need them most. So I'm going to go back here and just rest up. If you look here, we've got the red bar represents health. Blue is endurance. You really have to pay attention to your endurance. Now I'm going to go ahead and rest because it goes down very rapidly and you need it to combat. I'm going to rest. So rest and auto heal. I'm not going to read that right now. Um, auto heal is something that you don't want to do in this first dungeon apparently because um, we don't have any way of getting back to the inn right now. So we have to finish this, this dungeon before we can get back to our safe inn. So I'm not going to do auto heal because it might get us in trouble. Because auto heal, essentially, these guys just go into auto heal mode and they start using up all their endurance. And if you get caught in a combat while after auto heal, you may not have um, endurance to fight. All right, here we are, Pakmor Zhang, the main floor. Gotta get closer. There is music in the game, but I have disabled it because it's a little bit distracting. But as you can see here, you can change the resolution. I'm playing in a widescreen window at the moment. There's all the controls you can change, and there's music here. And you can muck around with that if you desire. Ah, uh, combat pus. Blobs of pus. I'm going to put this guy to sleep again. We're going to try that tactic. It seemed to work pretty well. I'd rather fight one than two at a time. And just with any flowers. They don't like to be burned, apparently. Oh, a critical hit. Oh, I did not like that. Small headache. And let's try the riot hits again. There they come. And I'm going to burn your butt. Ooh. Plus doesn't burn well. Nice. Okay, health, endurance, and exhaustion. I've already explained this. Uh, the blue bar is stamina. And you really have to keep an eye on that. There are potions to restore that, and you can rest to receive a little bit. So this rest that I did earlier, you really want to find a, a location that's some semi-secure, like the entrance of the temple, so you don't run into any combat encounters, chance encounters. And that restores a little bit of this um, when you rest. Actually, I think it restores it to full and a little bit of health. But this little gold ring here at the end of the endurance bar, stamina bar rather, that will continue to go down the more we fight in here um, and the more times we rest. So eventually you do have to go back to a safe zone like the, like the tavern, the inn, and I'll get to that later. A body. A dead priest. The priest looks like he met death. Quite by surprise. It looks as though he was hit in the back with multiple weapons. That, or he accidentally ran backwards into a loaded weapons rack. Dun -dun -dun okay, another dead priest. Nothing on them. Let's just check this out. Okay, I'm not going to read all these. Again, limited for time here, so no faults. Bottom. You can also search for secret doors and so forth. I haven't found anything yet, but if you just click on that or hit the X key, your rogue will do a cursory search for hidden stuff. All right, let's just go back since we're so close to the entrance. I'm going to do a quick rest and I'm going to do a heal spell. So I'm going to cast a negligible heal and I can choose my target, my recipient. 
and that will be Dirk. Oh, the love. And we're going to rest up here. No auto rest right now. Okay, yeah, so it does. It, it, when you rest, it brings your stamina to full, but it only reaches that cap, and that cap slowly dwindles. So that ring is going to be moving downwards slowly, and eventually you're just going to have to leave the dungeon and go to the inn. Let's check the side Oh boy, cultist and a priest. All right, I say we attack the priest first. He's probably the most dangerous. Uh, let's see if I can put this guy to sleep. Yes, lovely. Go back to the next target, and let's hit you with some writhing roots. So that causes a little bit of a side effect here, which has some kind of adverse impact on this guy. So, he, they are nasty looking up. Is that a mask, or is that his actual face? Wow. Oh, Lord, what was that? I was something happened so if you click on your character you get to see their stats here health is 22 out of maximum 24 endurance his current effect is staggered so he's been staggered with some kind of spell effect in three turns you can scroll cycle right through your characters as you can see everybody's level two here's your current experience so all the standard RPG fare and uh, priest let's hit you Eventually, when we level up, you'll be able to choose feats and enhancements and other skills that'll open up new attacks and so forth, as far as I can tell. I'm roast you. Right, I'm just going to hit you with my staff. Okay. Miss, not good. Oh, come on now. I want a backstab or something. Ariana's really quite the brute. All right, so finally some loot. Pick it up, a little silver, and a short sword. If you go to the inventory, it's a little bit um, confusing at first. This is the party inventory here, and you can do transfers between characters, but this is what um, everyone's carrying around in a separate party inventory, and you can drag and drop stuff from there. And this is everybody's inventory here. The primary hand, torso, and offhand and equip. Uh, what is that all about? I actually haven't messed with that yet. Um, you can use and discard, etc., etc., and I'll get to that later when I find something useful to use. All right, let's go check out this room. Looks bare. Table and chair, nothing useful. But a quick search in the corner. Nothing. All right, let's move on. Oh, gosh. Run away, run away. Some combats, mainly the ones with wandering monsters, allow you to flee. You do this by choosing the flee icon, F. He, when you do this, the active character will attempt to lead the rest of the party safely away. It doesn't always work, though you can have one or more characters take the fast feat, feat to improve your chances. In fact, I did this when I leveled up in my earlier game. I gave it to Dirk because he seems, um, it seems most appropriate on him since he's the rogue. I gave him fast feat. I still haven't fled yet, haven't had the need so far, but um, he would have to be the active character and you hit F to try to get the heck out. But it's only one guy, so I think I can handle him. Gonna hit him old school style with stuff. Like sticks, staves, blades. Whoa, critical baby. Two bits of silver. All right, remember keep an eye on your endurance. See, her endurance is absolutely nil at this point. This is, uh, again, since it's an old school style. Oh gosh, I went the wrong way. It's, um, it's pretty tough. I mean, it's not going to hold your hand for very long. This first dungeon at level 2, there's a lot of running back here and resting and so forth, so get used to that at first. It seems very safe here, though. I haven't been attacked in the in the entryway. But the more you do that, the lower that ring goes, so you have to keep an eye on that. Oh, this candle. I forgot to touch the candle. It's a smelly candle. Can't take it. I just felt like touching the candle. Oh, I have a full bronze star now, so I can use Fool's Luck and Second Wind. All right, so the one bronze star opens up these two. That's how it works. And then when this one gets to bronze, it'll open up Flesh Wound 1. And then you get three, you get I get better, or vice versa, I forget. But as this changes, if you get all three filled up bronze, and you continue on without using anything, it starts changing silver. Silver, silver, and then gold, gold, gold. And that will get you down here to the lower 
and uh, more effective levels of that same spell or effect or whatever. All right, let's um, let's go take on these fools. Oh, I don't want to. Oh, wait a minute. Let me just move out of the way. The wandering monsters seem not to bother you too much. Uh, so once we complete this mission, we will be able to join the Adventurers Guild. Just about. It means we get a recommendation from Silas. Silas is one of the original members of the guild, so a recommendation from him all but assures our membership. He's an original member? I guess that means... I guess that mean he's been doing this adventuring thing a long time, huh? A few typos, by the way. Yes, I think he was a sorcerer. I caught him ogling my wand. Are you sure? I get ogled all the time, so I can tell when my wand getting ogled and not me. I think he knew what kind of wand it was. It's a rare wand. I think he was a sorcerer and really knows his wands. <laughs> that sounds like the worst pickup line ever. <laughs> I'm going to stop that now. It's driving me crazy. All right. How about if we... Uh, I'm going to do a quick save. Nice thing about this, you can save anywhere. Very nice. Especially for casual people like me that only have certain amounts of time squeezed in between everything else. All right, uh, let's call this test drive one. So we can just move on. If I die, I'll just reload. Okay, these two priests shall be a difficult fight. Oh, cultists. Okay, pus ball cultists. Let's nail you. Ba-boom. Hey, now.